fifth commandment is you shall not murder. And this means that we should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Um, just about every year when I've taught confirmation, usually um, when we get to this commandment, people will often say, well, this is one commandment I know I've never broken. Uh, maybe I've broken the fourth commandment. I haven't always honored my father and my mother, but I know I've never murdered anybody. But when we look at the commandment more deeply, we'll see that it's not just telling us, you know, don't murder somebody. It's telling us that we should value and cherish the gift of human life at every level, in our speech, in our thoughts, in our actions, in what we do or what we don't do. We should guard and protect the gift of human life because God values and he cherishes human life as precious to him. Uh, so this commandment teaches us that, that God loves life, that life is valuable to him, that human beings are created in his image and his likeness, and therefore they have worth and dignity. This is not just a, an opinion that we have as Christians that, well, we, we've all just decided that people are valuable. Uh, we actually believe that people are valuable and have worth on the basis of a fact, that God has created people in his image, and therefore they have dignity and worth. It also teaches us that there is no real limit to uh, who has dignity and who doesn't. Um, so we say all human life has dignity, uh, regardless of whether somebody's born or unborn, whether they're in the womb or out of the womb. Um, all life is valuable to God. Um, if somebody is very elderly and not able to use their body or um, and they're not uh, in good health, um, maybe they've lost um, their ability to remember things, um, we would say that person is equally valuable to God and their life should be defended. If somebody is uh, disabled, if somebody is in, in poor health, uh, we as Christians say that those people have dignity and worth and their lives should be defended at every level. Um, so that is really the intent of the commandment, is that we should defend people's lives, that we should treat people with kindness and respect because they're valuable to God. And that extends to what we say and to what we think and to what we do. So the commandment tells us not to do certain things, don't speak harmfully, or do any harmful actions towards people. But it also tells us to do something. It tells us to care for people, to provide for people's needs. That's why as Christians we care for the poor and we care for those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Now what does this commandment teach us about ourselves? Well, it teaches us that, you know, very often we don't respect life. Very often we care about our own lives at the expense of other people's lives that um, we would uh, forget about those who are suffering and not care about them. Uh, we very often don't want to make sacrifices for those who have less than we do. Um, very often we speak hurtful words, disrespectful hurt, hurtful words and thoughts um, against those uh, created in God's image. And, um, and God forbids us to do that because all life is valuable to him. Uh, so this commandment should really lead us to search our hearts. Uh, we should not look at this commandment and say, well, I've never murdered anybody, I'm, I'm fine. We should look at really our hearts and say, um, do I hate anybody? Is there anybody that I hate? Have I ever spoken any harsh words against another person created in God's image? And if we have, we should ask God for forgiveness and we should turn away from those sins and find a refuge in the mercy of Christ. This commandment teaches us that God loves people, that God values human life, and it teaches us that God even loved human life to the point that he would send his own son, Jesus Christ, into our human flesh to become a person just like us. And the crazy thing is that human beings actually did to Jesus the worst thing possible. We as a human race murdered Jesus. 
we took him to the cross and we killed him. We put perfect love on the cross and crucified him. But the love of God is so strong that Jesus was raised on the third day, victorious over our hatred, so that he might conquer our hatred and put love in our hearts, so that we might love God and love our neighbor, even when it's costly, even when it's difficult. Because Jesus has so loved you from the top to the bottom, from beginning to end, that means that you are called to love your neighbor in deep, deep ways. Not just not hurting them in their body, but also helping them with whatever need they might have. Um, it means that you will speak words of kindness and not words of that, that hurt and that, and that wound. Um, this is what the commandment means, um, that we would truly love people as God has loved us.